Amen. So, as I preach to you often, like I learned in seminary just from reading the Bible so much, it wasn't really taught, uh, but in reading lots of the Bible every day, um, you see the humility, the message of being humble before the Lord absolutely everywhere in the Bible. And like I've tried my best to teach you the heart of God, that's really the message for all of us. What is the heart of God? What does God want? So that we may be as close to Him as possible is really what I try to preach, what the Holy Spirit puts on my heart. And uh, as we go through this Lenten period, uh, these chapters in John 13 through 17 are just the, the impact of them is incredible. Just read them over and over again. And as you read it through a second, third, fifth, tenth time, uh, different things will be revealed to you. The Holy Spirit will open up different things to your heart. But it begins here with the foot washing. And uh, before we get into the sermon even anymore, I just want to uh, raise up the Ukraine and uh, what we should have on our hearts is what if that was us? God is blessed to say amen. None of us has known a war on our land. None of us has been chased from our house by soldiers, by bombs. For those of you that know Bob the Vicar, you know he had a bomb shelter out there that was there when he got there. But still, uh, that it was a concern long ago. We do not live in that fear, but our prayers should uh, be with the Ukrainians and our hearts also. Like I've tried to teach you also, true prayer comes from your heart, not your mind. And so, uh, as you pray for the Ukrainians, as you pray and give thanks to God for uh, what we have here in America, let it be not just with your words, but with your heart. And so, uh, I think most of you take your faith seriously, and so I really <coughs> pray and want to impress upon your hearts as your pastor uh, to embrace throughout Lent these chapters in John. And so, we start with the foot washing. Most of you are familiar with the foot washing, has anyone here ever washed their feet? How many of you actually bend over and wash your feet? So, do you wash your own? And then the second question is, do you wash other people's feet? Yeah. Answer for that is probably no, but maybe a few of you have told me how in Marapas here, you all wash feet, and it was impactful, and it was very good. And so sometimes, uh, some pastors do that, they'll do a whole service where they wash your feet, but as we get into this, and there's many, 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 many lessons in this passage. It's 1 through 20, and Jesus covers a lot of ground, a lot of important things here. Uh, but the important thing is, and what we'll look at, is Jesus' message, and he says it explicitly. But before we get to that, uh, we're going to go to the next slide, <laughs> which is there. How many of you have ever claimed Joy Johns? I mean, if you want to. All right, what do you think of that job? Yes. That is probably not number one on anyone's list, although I have talked to some of the guys that fill, uh, clean those out. Do you know what they say is the number one thing by far that you find when you clean those out? Anybody know? No, no, good to me, good guesses. Uh, Multivitamin. Vitamins. They do not decompose in your stomach. He says those Joy Johns are often just full of vitamins. Yep, interesting guy. They've also told me they found rings and money and stuff, so, you know, there's an upside to that. The other thing, uh, for those of you who have met my friend John Howard from up north, he's a wastewater uh, treatment center manager, and he says there's two kind of wastewater managers, and there are those who have eaten poo, and those who will eat poo. And so, <laughs> it just goes with the job. And so, uh, we're here in church, and we're talking about washing feet, because uh, that job is very much like washing feet. I don't know if you think about it or not, I don't know how much history you know, but when you Think about the roads back in those days, and I know I've talked about it here before. Uh, 
lots of camels, donkeys, horses, whatever, going down the road, are they all potty trained? No, we've all been to Mackinac Island, right? And we want to walk right behind the horses. And the answer is no, because they don't wear diapers and they don't go to a certain area. So if you have that in mind, as you think of any major city in the ancient days, there are animals, there are people uh, just going down the streets and they go wherever. And so that is the world they live in. Like, uh, I know I've talked about at least once here before, John Wesley wrote, uh, not in large part, but talked about living over there in England and in Bristol and the major cities. Uh, and I don't know if you're aware, but uh, you know, you had your commode and you went to the bathroom, you got up out of bed, you went to the bathroom in your commode and then you just threw it out into the street. And so that caused a lot of illness and sicknesses until they figured out that's really not a good thing. And that's causing a lot of disease. And so that's something that changed throughout the world when they figured that out. But the job, the streets, uh, the feces, all these bad things that are just in the street always uh, lead to foot washing. Because what we have to keep in mind, what kind of shoes did they wear? They had sandals, and so the foot washing is very much the same as if you, uh, I mean, lots of farmers here, if you go out and you feed the pigs and cattle or whatever, and you got mud and stuff all over your boots, if you just walk through your house, what happens? It's all full of that stuff. You don't want to be in your house, right? At least most people, some people don't mind. But uh, most of us don't want that stuff throughout our house. And that's what leads to foot washing. And so as we look at Jesus, he's assuming what many people consider to be the worst job there is. If you don't have a profession, if you don't have a trade, one of the things you can do to make money is to be outside a house and wash people's feet when they're going to go in. The other thing maybe you don't know is that every house had a foot washing station. Every house had water outside so that when you got to their house, you could wash your feet. And so that's an important thing to know. And so, the uh, thing we're going to look at next is what was Jesus' position? When you think of Jesus, what is the first word that comes to your mouth or your mind? Why did Jesus come to earth? Why did Jesus come to be with us? And most of us will say that he came to uh, wash away our sins, to make us whole, to die on the cross, all of those things. But when you make that list, and it would be fun if we were in a class or had time, and we're going to be here, here all day. How many of you want to stay all day? We can have more fun if we do that. All right. So... Um, if we all gave our word, why did Jesus come? We could make a long list, right? But I guarantee you, when you look at that list, it will all add up to one word. It will all add up to serve. And uh, this passage that begins his walk to uh, Holy Communion, to the Last Supper, this first thing that he does that leads to the cross, that leads to the resurrection, is not by accident. There's a reason it's here. It's a reason it's so important in the Bible. It's the reason that everyone writes about it in the Gospels. It's because it is so very important. When you think of your life as a Christian, what I hear most people say is, I'm good. I don't lie. I don't cheat. I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do that. I rarely hear anywhere the first word out of a Christian's mouth is, I strive as hard as I possibly can to be a servant to my brothers and sisters. To take that even a step further, think about this week, subtract your family, because even though most any pagan will take care of their family. Who outside of your family that benefits you not? Did you serve? And the answer for most people in most churches is no. And yet when we look at Jesus' life, that's what his whole life was. And then a point the Holy Spirit put on my heart as I was reading this last night, this passage, is uh, 
what's Peter, Jesus knows what's going to happen, right? What's Peter about to do to Jesus? He's going to deny him three times, right? Even in this passage, when we go just a little bit further, Jesus says, oh, really, Peter? You know, Peter says, I'll do anything for you. <laughs> and Jesus says, oh, really? How about I tell you this? And Peter says, no, 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 not me, not me. And then he does exactly that. And then the one that's even worse is Judas. And the message, the thing that we see in this passage, Jesus knows Peter is going to deny him three times. Jesus knows Judas is going to turn him in and betray him. You know, we teach that as the betrayal of Judas. And yet, what does Jesus do? Jesus washes his feet. Jesus takes the lowest job possible. Another thing you should glean from this passage, and just going over it lightly, is the opportunity was there for all of the apostles to wash each other's feet, right? Any one of them could have been a servant. Every one of them admitted and knew that Jesus was the Son of God. Every one of them admitted and knew that Jesus was the Messiah, and yet none of them washed Jesus' feet. So what is their heart? And it's interesting because when Jesus begins to wash Peter's feet, oh, no, 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 don't wash my feet. I should be washing your feet. But if his heart was to serve Jesus in the first place, he would have done it before anything was mentioned, right? And it's very much about uh, if someone does something wrong or hurtful, when is it that they apologize? Most often when they get caught, right? They say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But uh, the answer to that is too often you're sorry you got caught. You're not really sorry for what you did or you wouldn't have done it or you would have apologized sooner. And so there's all these messages about the falseness of the heart of the apostles in this passage and Jesus willing to be the lowest of the low in order to serve the apostles. He's willing to get on his hands and knees to use his cloak to clean their feet. And we know that going into Resurrection Sunday, the symbolism here is that Jesus did all he could for you. Amen? Man has no greater love than to give his life for his brother or sister, and that's exactly what Jesus did. And so this washing of the feet is a forecasting, it's a foreshadowing of what is to come from the cross, when the water turns to blood, when being on his knees turns to being on the cross, being in the tomb. The message from Jesus is always, always, always that he would do everything anything that he possibly could for you. And then the question is, if we're going to be Christ-like, isn't our heart, our minds, our thoughts supposed to be the same? Because uh, an important message in that Peter and Judas thing is, Jesus has already forgiven them, whether they know it or not. Jesus has accepted and forgiven Judas and Peter before they even do it. What a beautiful heart that is. And so uh, as we read through this final thought, who is the greatest quarterback of all time? Who is the greatest hockey player? Who is the greatest chef? Who is the greatest singer? Because this passage says, as we read for, uh, through Matthew 23, we take this passage into Matthew, which says, The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humble. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And so the question I want to leave you with today is, what is your place in heaven? We all talk about we're going to be with heaven. We're going to be with Jesus. Uh, but, you know, we read, when we read Paul, he says, I went to a certain level of heaven. When we read this passage in Matthew, 
The greatest among you be the servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And all of that is heavenly things. And when you think about going to heaven, are you, where are you going to be? What is your place? Are we all equal? Uh, is there a table that we all eat at? Do you want to get in by the skin of your teeth? Uh, you know, I firmly believe for all of us, we all sin, we all fall short. We're all made whole by the blood of Christ. But in the kingdom of God, as God looks down upon us, how much of your heart is boldly and unabashedly, fearfully seek out your faith and fear? How much of us, how many actually come before the Lord in fear? How many come before Him humbly? How many of us try to raise up our brothers and sisters in the Lord? You know, I've uh, been around a lot, chef for a long time, uh, you know, captain of lots of teams I was on. I truly believe that as a true leader, a sign of leadership is when those around you get stronger because you're teaching, you're empowering, you're helping them to be leaders also. And as Jesus does these things, as he kneels before the apostles to do the dirtiest job he could possibly do, to show them as an example of what they should be, uh, that true leadership isn't found in controlling everyone and everything. It's not found in bossing people around or having a bad temper or all those things. We've all had good bosses and bad bosses, right? And so here, what I want us to have on our heart throughout Lent, in prayer, in our church. Uh, any successful church that truly grows, uh, the people don't walk around saying, I want, I want, I want, and pointing out the, the places where other people fall short. Churches that grow spiritually and in every way are churches where we are together, where we pray for each other, where we lift each other up, where we empower And so as we look at the washing of Jesus' feet, take a serious look at your life. Who are you serving? How are you serving? Not just God, but your brothers and sisters. Take this message of Jesus on his knees, cleaning the manure off of people's feet, and saying, this is what I call you to do. Each one of you, as you sit there now, how and where in your life are you serving the way Jesus calls you to serve? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for the precious example of Jesus. May it touch our hearts, may it guide us, may it change us. Lead us to where and how we can serve for your glory. And may we all be humble before the Lord and humble before you, each other. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen.